Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. Hey, y'all. It's December. Power moves December. Welcome to the end of the year, bitches We're almost and gentlemen. And gentlemen. <laughs> bitches and gentlemen. Bitches and gentlemen. Um, we're almost there. We've almost made it through 2022. That's fucking crazy. It flew the fuck by. It really did. It really, truly did. It's kind of giving me anxiety. <laughs> I'm excited, but I'm like a little anxious. Um, but, you know, this month has been really, I think, powerful in general. And um, in the spirit of power moves, we have brought you guys some powerful people that we are honored to know. And today I'm really, really excited because we have a special guest. Um, he is coming, visiting us all the way from New York, Brooklyn, Brooklyn baby, Brooklyn. to be exact. Brooklyn in the house. There you go. BK. <laughs> um, we have Luis, co-founder of Susia NYC. Yes, yes. Hello, folks. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And we'll get into what Susia is because me and Mila are avid fans of uh, of your community. And thank what you. Thank you. Over there. And well, we've and this. Uh, although this is your first time on the show, I have you know that we have spoken about Susia many many times. Oh, yes, awesome. we have. <laughs> well, if you, I, I'd like to jump in and say it's also your community as well. Well, thank you. You know, there 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 is no one person that it belongs to, and that's what I think makes it so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It really, it feels that way too when, when, when we go. So, um, can you, A, maybe give our audience a little, um, just a quick run through of what, what is Susia and what is Um, Susia started as, as just a regular party. Uh, I used to bartend at a place called Madame X, uh, years ago. And, uh, my homegirl, DJ Juicy, shout out. Um, we started a party called Susia. I just, we thought about the name, um, I remember hearing the name a lot used in a derogatory way towards women who were behaving like men. Like dirty girls? Dirty girls, like sucia. Hose. It's a sucia callejera, Hose. you know Hose. what I'm saying? Like like just just doing doing things that niggas do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like what? That's she's a bad person now. And uh we did that party for a while and it kinda died down. And uh when my fiance and I were introduced to a more sex positive life, um we decided to start it up again, and I thought that was a very appropriate name. Uh, you know, just Susia encompasses for me like dope feminine energy, and I don't want to be a part of anything that doesn't have dope energy, especially dope feminine energy. I think that's key, uh, in particular dope black woman energy. That's kind of what it's about, and brown and indigenous, but, you know, it's black as fuck. That's how we try to keep it. Mm-hmm. You know? In shorter terms, <laughs> <laughs> Luis, Luis's community, Susia, is a pleasure party slash sex party. Mm-hmm. Correct? It is that. It's, it's a lot more than that. So Susia NYC, as the umbrella, uh, we incorporate uh, Susia Dance, which is a dance party. Uh, we also have Susia Play, and we're working on Susia Health which is basically going to address a lot of the issues that have been coming up. When you have a sex-positive space like ours, when you create a safe space, um, people feel comfortable. And within that comfort, they're comfortable to show their traumas, you know, and you got to respect it. So Susia dance, straight dancing, like we're having fun, we're, you know, we're chilling. Susia play, <laughs> all right, is, it's, it's, it's a sex party. It's a, it's a, it's a sensual event. Um, there is no, there is no, uh, pressure to participate. We don't do mandatory dress downs. Um, we want people to feel safe. We want people to feel seen, to be heard. Um, in particular, black women, that's where it's at. I've seen a lot of really beautiful breakthroughs with people, you know, um, and, and it lets me know that I'm part of something that is positive. Uh, you know, after thinking about it for a lot in my head, like what is it that we're doing and and what's the intent behind it? You know, it, it's dawning on me that, you know, and, and talking to a lot of young people as well, too, through quarantine and all that, that the intent behind this is a deconstruction of our sexuality, a decolonization of our sexuality. Um, growing up Latino and, and, and black in Brooklyn, um, I was surrounded by that, even as a man, the shame. You know, you're hiding shit, you know what I'm saying, about your sensuality, your sexuality. Um, you know, when you could just be ethically non-monogamous, 
you know, we're choosing to be out there fucking hoeing and doing dumb shit, you know, and putting people in danger, you know, physical danger and spiritual danger and breaking hearts and shit. And um, a lot of this could be eliminated, I think, once we start having those conversations, and they're hard to have, you know. But once you get through those conversations, it's it's a beautiful breakthrough, and, and it may be for some people, it may not, may not be for others. Not everybody in our party plays. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of people that just like being around the energy and dancing and and just like, wow, I'm free. Like, I'm I'm here. I could be in any stage of, of, of nudity, and I don't have any creep behind me. You know, I don't feel like I'm being judged. I'm just going with the flow, and 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 that's that's what Susia play for me is is. Um, speaking of that, like the community and what it like embodies. How, what was your journey into this space? Because you've come from from Brooklyn, because you didn't necessarily grow up in an environment that was like welcoming of you know sensuality, like a lot of black and brown people haven't. What was your journey in like creating this this community? Um, well, I, it was created with um, with my fiance Simona uh, and our primary couple. Shout out to Pam and X, House of Pax. Um, and your primary couple, when you say that, it's like the, who you guys play with most, most yeah, primarily. Yeah, those, those are our homies. Those are our dogs. Right, we right. love them. You know, like we've, like when we met them, it all made sense. We're, we were going to parties that were white as fuck. They introduced you to this, like. <laughs> they, 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 through them, we, int- we met a lot more people, black and brown people that were in the lifestyle. And it was such a contrast from being in spaces that were like aggressively white. Mm-hmm. That was my question. I was wondering if you had, uh, I, I'm assuming you had partaken in other experiences in other places where maybe you felt, um, I don't know, maybe like even marginalized or just alone in those spaces. Fetishized. Fetishized, mm. yeah. yeah. I um, It's so funny because on the, <clears throat> a few days ago, uh, my partner was like, have you seen, have you heard of the sex party called Sanctum? Mm. And I'd never heard of it. And then they have this like documentary or something on HBO and it's, it's very, first of all, it's, it's very white, a eh? very. Mm-hmm. I like white. the word aggressively white. It's no, no. It is, it is, a, it's a, it is aggressively white, and also this man, like that, he's basically charging people like a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year to like For the membership to have this membership, and I, I thought, and like. It's. It felt very. He was creating safe spaces, but it was very much for the male gaze. Mm. So it's not a safe space, right? It, it will, he's creating. He's 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 monetizing. The reason I said safe space is because the women are openly participating. Like, they want to be there. They're excited to be there. But it's truly couples come to play. But it really is about, like, them feeding the male, like, sexual appetite. They said that? Yeah, but uh, I mean, that's they, what you got from They it. didn't say that. I but just That's what I gathered. gathered. Yeah. But, but then again, the, then that's not a safe space. Because when you're in a real safe space, it's not catering to any one individual. In my opinion, it's actually the forward energy should be feminine. Mm, no, for absolutely. Like that should be it because, um, you know, I, I tell people like in a consent speech that your body is not there for my pleasure and vice versa, you know? So when you're in a space where you see equality, where you see proper representation, when you see people that are there not just to get their rocks off, you kind of you kind of really feel what safety is. Right. You feel what it is. Like, yeah, I know why we're here. You know, we try to fuck, but we don't have to. Right, right. You know, we could just talk. We could connect. You know, communication is, what, 93% physical? You know, cues, you know, vo- vo- vocalization is everything else. So spaces like that, I don't fuck with. I don't. I've, I'll walk in and walk right out. I don't understand how you could have a room full of 80 people and it's like two niggas in there. Like, <laughs> like are you like trying? Like, you only know two niggas? No, no, no. Look, like, like they called <laughs> the particular fucking BBC stereotype to come in and they call, you know, the Amazonian woman to come in and then boom, there you go. Mm-hmm. And then they're looked at. And you know what? If that's what they're into, the brothers and sisters, then yeah, that's cool. I'm not going to yuck your yum. But... S- someone once told me, like, why are you inserting race into sex? And I'm like, how, how could you not? Right. How could you not? Like, what fucking planet do you live on? Where, where, where have you been the last three years? You know? So, like, no, I, I, I can't be a part of a space that doesn't 
reflect my people, mm. where I don't see my people in there, you know. And, you know, Susia NYC, we're, we're dedicated to creating a safe space for black, brown, and indigenous women and black, brown, and indigenous LGBTQI, TGNC populations with a focus on women. You know, we're not saying white people can't be there, but if, if you're a white person and you feel like you're not invited, don't come, <laughs> you know, like if you're good, you're good. Yeah. Like we're not, we're not here to, um, to make you feel comfortable. You already feel comfortable. Right. You're good. You know? So, and so entering into those other spaces was, was that somewhat the inspiration and maybe meeting? Your- oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, um, my fiance and I had a, Simone and I had a conversation and, you know, we're just trying to meet people, and we're like, this, this shit is kind of weird, you know. Um, and in my head, I'm like, damn, ain't, ain't no ain't no black or Spanish people in this lifestyle. Right. Like, this is wild. And then we found some some pretty cool black and Spanish parties, and they were very male-driven, you know, uh, the mandatory dress-down. That's not consensual. So mandatory dress-down means, like, you have to At get... At 12 o'clock, you, you have to get yeah, naked. Naked or down to lingerie. And... Um, we went to one party where this guy kept telling us, you know, you guys got to dress down. You got to undress. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't feel like it. You know? And um, then one of the women came up. And and this is where I, I learned. I'm like, I'm looking at the sister, and she's repeating the same thing the host was. And I'm like, like, how can you as a woman put another woman in, in a position like that? You know what I'm saying? Not that my my fiance is not shy by any means. She just ain't going to be told what to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? She's a powerful woman. It's like, nah, you know? So that 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 for me was was a turning point. Um you know, there there are a lot of parties out there that that are not safe, that are not community based. Um there are a lot of parties out there that allow consent violators in there. You know, there are a lot of dudes that are like that's my boy, you know, he didn't do that and it's like, look, like what? 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 What do you need to know? Like why? Like I got homies of mine. I'm not gonna invite to my party. <laughs> you, you, can't you know have. what I'm saying? Like, and it's cool. I still love them. You know. But even then, you know, like with everything that's happened the last few years, and I apply it to to to, to Susia and YC. It's kind of like if we're not gonna have any, if we're not gonna hold space or or allow people to to express their racisms, which we shouldn't. Why are we allowing men to express their misogyny? You know, like, why are we allowing that? Like, why am I pro-black but sexist? Right. Mm-hmm. Why am I pro-black but transphobic or homophobic? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why am I pro-black but I'm trying to shame the sister into doing something she doesn't want to do? You know? Whoever it is. So, yeah. Um, how, because uh, I know that we have a, we've, because we've shared Susia before, mm-hmm. we get a lot of messages from people like, where do we find, you know, a play party? Like, how can we find a play party? What is, A, what is the difference between a play party and a sex party? Or um, what is the process of getting admittance into a play party? So I'm curious if you could please share, like, what is the process of, of of someone being able to attend one of your parties? The process for Susia NYC, uh, if you go to Susia NYC on Instagram, there is a vetting link. Uh, follow the link. We ask five questions. Um, we don't, Choose people. Just, what are they? Um, they change. Mm. They change. W- one of them is, what's the last book you read? I'm like, let, let, <laughs> let me know you can hold a conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, bruh. <laughs> but you know what? At the same time, you know, we, 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 it's not like, it's not like we're looking for the most intellectual, most beautiful people. We're looking for cool people who know how to behave, who know how to hold space for each other. And that's super important. Um, we don't overpopulate our parties. Um, we don't, you know, we're not, we're not here to fucking make a dollar like that. I mean, yeah, we want to be compensated, but that's not the, that's not the drive behind it. That's what separates us from other houses is that we started as a community and then we turned into a house, Mm -hmm. you know, so they could go on, on IG, get vetted, answer the questions. Um, I will say we had this one white lady say she's there for the BBC. She was not, she was not. That was immediately. She she, she put that bold. in the application. Oh yeah, yeah, she's bold, but but, but that's <laughs> but that's the shit. Bitch, how you thought you was gonna get in? Because the they <laughs> are used to fetishizing us, right? And we are used to allowing that shit to, to happen. happen. 
You know what I'm saying? Especially fellas. And it's like, like, yo, man, be about your shit. Respect yourself a lot more than that. But if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. Mm. Again, I'm not going to yuck anyone's yums, you know? Um, yeah, get vetted. We have a game night. Uh, it's a platonic game night. We come through, we feature speakers. Uh, we have had, we were really honored to have uh, Cinnamon Love uh, hold a um, a game night workshop uh, that centered around uh, sex positive parenting. Mm. Uh, we have another really, really, really dope sister, Vita Sawyers, La Vida Loca.34 on IG. She, um, she's amazing. She's a amazing black queer polyamorous woman who just answers questions about polyamory. Mm. Like she's up there talking about it. Um, we've also had another woman, uh, Coco L highly sensitive black woman on IG, highly sensitive black woman. She's super dope. She's held workshops on like oral classes, you know, so we try to keep it fun. We try to keep it informative. We've had you know, comedians come to our game nights Mm -hmm. and hold a show and then afterwards, all the conversations are pertinent to sex positivity. What does it mean to you? It's it's a large umbrella. Sex positive could be anything from like, hey, I'm comfortable around people to like, hey, I'm real comfortable around people. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and doing the work, it's a constant, it's a constant thing. Um, I've learned so much about myself, about the way I interact with people, being in this lifestyle, learning about enthusiastic consent. And how to apply it in everyday life. You know, understanding that willingness is is not a yes. You know, and looking back on my regular life and seeing how many times people have um, been willing to do things, you know, and why. You know, and why was I down to let them go through it? Mm. You know, so, you know, it's growth. And, and we're lucky to have a lot of really cool brothers in the community, you know. There's some people that we have to let go, and that's fine. They may not be safe for the community or we're not safe for them, you know, because like I said before, being in an environment like that could be very triggering, Mm -hmm. you know, which why enthusiastic consent is, like, key. When you're in someone's space, ask if you sit next to them, you know. Do they want to be spoken to? Maybe they just want to sit there and watch. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just want to sit there, watch, go in, Buck and come right back out and go back into their shell. That's fine. Let them work it out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's our responsibility, Susie and YC, to offer support after. You know, if we're going to take your money and you're coming here, like we're going to offer you some, like, okay, cool, here's some links you go to talk about what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I think that's important. I think it's super important, and I'll just speak from my my own experience. You know, I had never been to a sex party, play party ever. Susia was my first, and mm. I'm just I'm so grateful that it was because it really set a very high standard for me. Because I have been to other spaces since then and been like, this feels weird. No, oh, yeah. Um, and so I remember uh, one of our one of our close friends invited us to Susia, and we came, and you're. The place, your the place where you hold it is a. It's so beautiful. Thank it's you. so um, welcoming. The moment you walk in, it feels like family. And um, what struck me the most, and what I took from Susia that first time, was the consent speech, and and the use of the word enthusiastic consent because I'd never really heard it um, talked about in that way. And I think that especially as women, like we have a really hard time, especially I would say probably in a space like that, because it's kind of implied that, you know, what the fuck you're walking into. And, you know, if I if I spend, you know, 15 minutes talking to you at the bar, and we're flirting a little bit, then, you know, it's probably yeah. going to go down. And I think that, you know, when I heard that speech and you were talking about cons- enthusiastic consent and And making sure that um, she's excited to partake with you. Mm -hmm. And then even after the aftercare and what should happen afterwards. Like, don't just, like, fuck and then walk away and be like, peace, bitch. Aftercare. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. It's it's important. It's important. Yeah, yeah, that, that first time we came and you gave the consent speech. There were some things that like really stuck out to me. And um, it was like my first time hearing a man say certain shit. Mm -hmm. And it was like, listen, fellas, um, 
just because she's here or she's being nice to you, read the room doesn't mean she necessarily wants to like participate with you. And I was like, damn, I'm happy he gets it. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times women are like conditioned to be people pleasers and to be nice. And to, and like you said, there's so many times I've been in situations where I'm like, well, we flirted or he bought me a drink. We went to dinner and now I'm like obligated to do this or that. But yeah. being in your environment, hearing this speech and like first of all like you really can't even come out you can't come in after the speech has been told unless you've been there before and you've been vetted but like your speech i was like i almost brought tears to my eyes i'm like oh, where am i at is this, oh, is this a sex you. party or is this a, <laughs> but you know, therapy therapy right right but he was just like you know if someone's falling if someone has fallen asleep man or woman they're not to be touched that's not that's not an invitation to touch anyone if you if you if you play with somebody and then you know it's not like check in with them make sure they're good before you go to the next person um enthusiastic yeses and like there were all these things that i had never heard a man say and then like open it up for the party like these are the rules i was like wow this is this is pretty amazing in addition to the fact it's a beautiful space in addition to the fact that it's mostly brown and black people and i've been to sex parties before and it's not the vibe and it feels I've been to sex parties and it feels predatory and it feels like everybody's watching you. Mm -hmm. And you know, like maybe there's only the, you're one of the two attractive people in the room and you're like, everybody's fucking watching me. And like, but I almost expected that that is the, like, that's the expectation of those type of parties until I came to Susia and I was like, Oh my God, I feel like I'm at home, mm -hmm. you know, hugs and embracing. And like, even for me right now, um, I'm in tan Tantra school and I didn't realize how like I didn't realize how deep like understanding your pleasure was into how you um, how you function in your everyday life, especially for women. And I think so often we're told this is how you're supposed to act. This is how you're supposed to perform is that it's very rare for us to really check in and really identify what brings us pleasure and what we really want to do and so much so it's like damn can't like is this pleasurable to me or have I been totally telling myself this is pleasurable or I feel obligated and so like being in spaces like Susia where I've like there's been times I've participated and there's been times I haven't you know and but either way I feel completely safe and I feel like you know, I'm a topless ass bitch. If I want to take my shirt off, I'm not feeling like anyone's going to invitation. It's an invitation to, to touch yeah. me, or it means something, or it means I need your att like attention or anything like that. It's just like a really, truly a space to like come as you are. To me, it's like the truest form of church. You know, they tell they, they uh, tell no, you at church like come as you are, but they be lying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they be like no. Yeah. But if you but like if you come to this this community, you get the chance to experience this. You really get to feel um, the safety of just showing up as yourself. There's no obligation to like to to be sexual or to be sexy or to do this or to do that. But it's really just like. Hey, I can deep hug this person that I never met for five minutes. You know, I've never felt as comfortable in certain spaces as I have in certain sex parties where it's like, do you, do you would like me to give you head? And I'm like, you know, I think I'm just dancing tonight. Okay, like we will dance, mm. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, that's nice. Like, thank you I for know, asking. One thing that, that I learned, um, and even for men too, is um, learning how to say no before anything, like owning your nose. Um, I think as as a man, if I'm approached by a woman and I'm not in the headspace, and I identify as a demisexual, I like connections, you know, saying as I've, as I've gotten older, it's like, you know, I could not fuck, I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, like, I'm good. Um, telling a young lady no, you know, and then me projecting how she may feel about it, and then like that I, you know, and most times I'm like, okay, cool. You know, uh, Avita, who I mentioned earlier, put me onto this and she was like if someone says no your response could be something like thank you for taking care of yourself mm. thank you for taking the time out to know your body to know where you're at and to draw that boundary i respect that and then keep it moving I think it's important like even just knowing that that like knowing that language some people don't even know what the what the next step is to know like what to say mm. to that it's it becomes awkward yeah. or angry or... Or you're in your head about how yeah. they're going to react to it. So, so you're like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it. Like, so I don't want to make them feel bad. Like, almost having mm. a toolbox prepared mm. of, like, things to to say in reaction to, you yeah. know, the no's or the yeses or the maybes or yeah. come back around. Maybe I'll, you know, feel differently in, in, in a few. I, I don't think... 
for me personally, it's not my responsibility how someone else takes it. If I say it, if you're coming from a place of compassion and love, however they receive it is how they receive it. Yes, but but doesn't it also feel good when when it's received and yeah. and and it, the response is that oh, you yeah. know like 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 I thought that was I thought that was when 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 she said that's that's something you could say to people and this was at one of our workshops I was like yo that that is like that is the most beautiful like no you know other than just someone saying you know I'm good mm-hmm. you know I I'm I'm. I think I, I've had to work on really not worrying about how the person takes it mm-hmm. because my happiness comes first. Well, that, and that's not always <laughs> easy for people to do. No, it's not. That's I think what we, I'm we're almost trained into being people pleasers. Like, no, I know no. I'm like that. I've done things. I'm like, she looks sad. Just come over here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, and no. it's like, no, <laughs> no, you don't need to no, do that. Oh, yeah. I, I find myself in situations. And with men, it's funny because if we're not into it, our body won't work. You know what I'm saying? If we're not taking dick pills and shit, our body won't work. Then it gets even more awkward. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And it's like even more like, you know, like, oh, I don't know. Like, g- gummy worm out this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so, like, so n- learn how to say no. I think that's really important. It's practice it. You know, practice it in regular life. You know what I'm saying? Stop saying yes to shit. Like, mm-hmm. I say no to shit. I say yes to sh- I used to say yes to things I knew I wouldn't do. <laughs> right, just like, like yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, no. just, just, and then when it comes, you'll say no later. You'll say no later. I'll handle so, this no later. So this is one of the things I feel that th- being in this lifestyle helped me bring over to my daily life. Mm. It's like owning my no's, owning my yeses. Um, you know, being aware of the drugs you take when you're in a party like that. How much you drink that is that is key. You know, you, you don't want to wake up regretting something. You don't want someone else to wake up regretting something. Right. You know, as much as it is about you having fun, you want to facilitate a good time. It doesn't have to be a physical good time, but just a good experience with someone else. You know, um, which we mentioned earlier, aftercare. Aftercare is super important. After see, see how they're doing. You okay? You want some water? You know, can I give you a little foot massage or something? Just something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Th- thank you for allowing me to enter your body. You know what I'm saying? Enter your space. Like, that's like... You know, and I've been to parties where it's 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 scary. But again, there are people who are into that. There's definitely there's there's um, I want to get people are gonna get mad at me. Like transactional. They're they're the parties where it's just a bunch of niggas and fat white chicks, <laughs> and that's what it is. Like that's what it is, and that's cool. And that's if, what they and that's what those that's, fat chicks. If that's, fat if chicks, that's what they're if that's, that's what, what they, they want. About. That's what they want. I think that even in your space, like say that they say you do have a kink of like. Hey, don't talk to me afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to. That's negotiated prior. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, disrespect me. But like, I want you to disrespect me. I'm telling you now yeah. before you disrespect me, yeah. so that we're we're both consensual in this yeah. this disrespect. Essentially, but in that exchange, the person allowing that is actually the person in power. In the power, because yeah. you're allowing that to happen, mm-hmm. and the person has to respect that. You know. Um, People don't talk about sex a lot, even in relationships. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people don't like to, to to know certain things or they just assume, you know, like in a play situation, you talk like, hey, what, what do you like? Since we're about to play, what do you like doing? How do you want me to kiss you? How do you want me to, to taste you? All these things, you know? Um, how far are you going to allow me to go? You know? So these things are really important. Pacing yourself. You know, it's it's not it's not a free for all. Like, just come in, chill, have a good time, man. Just, we got DJs, we got fucking. You do. You have DJs. Yeah. The music's good, the and, music is good. And shout out to, to to Gecko Gecko Jones is uh, providing the soundtrack for Susia Dance and Susia Play. And, and the ambiance is sweet. It's just yeah. dimly lit, sexy. Yeah. The last time I we went, or actually, no, was it was the last? Well, I've, you know, I've been a few times, but the, we went this last time. But then I went before her. I came with my partner. It was mm-hmm. just us there and um 
you having scenes like you have these scenes essentially where people are kind of do it's educational or you can kind of try try on things try mm-hmm. things on and for me like i've always been interested in in bondage mm-hmm. and kind of ple- the, the idea of like pleasure and pain and i've never had a partner that really a felt comfortable enough to explore that with me or b was interested in it and so when i came to your party mm-hmm. um there was i can't remember her name oh man uh oh, she uh, what's her name? Uh, okay. Well, she was doing. She was doing. If, if if you could put it on the type thing later, like just throw it up. I want to give this such a prop. She's dope. She so. is dope. She was. She was really dope. And um, uh, she was like, "Do you do you want to try this?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I asked my partner, "I was like, are you okay with this?" He was like, "Yeah, well, I want. Let's do it." Yeah. And so she asked me to lay over him. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Oh just, shit. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Like, oh, look at her. <laughs> she was gonna lay over him and she was flogging me and just making sure to like check in on me and especially for me like it's like I have this thing with pain there's certain pain that I like and other pains that I don't spanking is one of those things where I'm like uh, do I like this I don't know but the way she did it because she's so you know well versed in her space um I felt so much pleasure and Mm -hmm. the fact that I got to lay on top of my partner and experience this. Mm -hmm. Um, And then what's that thing called Orlando? What's that that, like? Lager? The Wormberg wheel. So then she started using that thing on me and I was like, Oh my God. So, and then my partner seeing this, like it inspired him in our relationship to then when he saw how much pleasure I was receiving from this, it inspired him in my in our relationship to explore these things even further. And so I think the space can be such a beautiful place for couples mm-hmm. um, wanting to experience new sensations, yeah. new kinks. It's you. There's people there that are educated and can really show you how it's done. And that's mm-hmm. what I also love is is the education piece that that you provide in these spaces. Um, I think the first time we came, there was like rope. There was someone doing rope play mm-hmm. and teaching you how to like tie up people properly. Actually, she tied me up too. Um, but I, I loved that. And, you know, I, be, being able to do that with someone that I love and um, even though like, not even though, with people in the room, it felt super, it still felt so intimate. And I didn't feel like I was being watched or like everyone now everyone crowd around and let's watch what's <laughs> happening over here. Oh, yeah. No, there's certain parties you know? I've, I've gone to where it's like, yo. At dude, least pretend like you're not. Because, like, you know, not, because people be do, jerking off over people. Oh, that's like, weird. Like, and, like, and, and people do come because they're voyeurs, right? Yeah. Like, they come to these parties because maybe they don't want to partake, but they do want to watch. Yeah. And that's fine. But like, no, feel the vibe. Know because the vibe. There's a, we ask people. If you're gonna watch, don't gawk. Like, it's okay. There's there's a way to look. There's a way to appreciate something without intruding into someone's space or making them feel uncomfortable, or completely making them making them feel like some inanimate fuck object. Being. Like you know a what I'm por- saying? A live porn. Yeah, it's like no. The, 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 these are humans. We also ask people. Another thing that's really important when you're in a scene is. Um, for people to negotiate if they could join the scene prior to that. Don't interrupt. Because then it Don't, feels awkward and you're like, Yeah, because oh. then it's really hard. Because then the no is going to be like, nah, nigga. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Like, then, you, then you get the hard no, you know, and 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 then you're the you're the awkward, weird one. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you don't want to be that. Um, I think it's a great place for couples. I've learned a lot about interacting with, with, with Simona via the lifestyle. I've learned a lot about her body. Um, I learned to put myself first as well. Because for a long time as a dude, I think I put her pleasure before mine because I didn't know how to tap into mine. And so I think people do that. You t- you know, I have kids too. You take care of your kids. You do everything before you take care of yourself. And next thing you know, you're like, you're not focusing because you don't know how to. I agree. Yeah. I think I think people um, underestimate the power of knowing your pleasure. And I'm reading a book right now for school. And um, shout out to Debbie. She's also been a, a, a guest on our show. That's a good episode if you guys haven't watched it. But um, there's a part, there's a chapter, and it's about like um, a lot of times people rely on their partners to bring them pleasure without even knowing what. 
is pleasurable to them first. And in the book, they're just like, what a, what a like, huge responsibility you're putting on your partner and you yeah. haven't even explored that yet. And when I read that, I was like, damn, like you're putting pressure on someone outside of yourself to provide power, like to provide pleasure for you. And I had to like really like sit in that for a minute because I mean, obviously I've been very sexually active in the last 34 years of my life, probably the last 16 ish more. Um, but how much have I really like paid attention to how I experience pleasure is not that much. So it's a crazy like understanding to be like, oh, I've had lots of sex. Some of it's been good. Most of it hasn't. But just like almost like fishing out there, hoping to get the pleasure, but like not even honing in on what that means for myself and just expecting my partners to figure it out. And I think and uh, also almost shaming those people that didn't please you yeah. and being like, yeah, that sucked. They sucked. And it's like, bitch, you don't even know no, what you want. Right. But, and then even sometimes, like, Orlando's, like, jacking off, like, nobody's business. And I'm like, I can't just do that. Like, it doesn't, like, first of all, I don't masturbate, like, that much. But then I'm like, am I, I'm jealous. Like, why <laughs> Why the fuck do you know your body this well? Like, I like, I think women and men, just in general, it takes different things for us to get there. Mm -hmm. But in, in during this, like, this journey of Tantra, you know, like, understanding the power of pleasure has been deeply like has really opened up some shit inside me like other layers that I hadn't expected it to open and like to the point of just like yeah going to a party and being able to identify especially for women who have been put in situations that um maybe you didn't feel comfortable in maybe you just said yes because you felt obligated but being it puts you in a position because to be in power of yourself and to say no and to exercise no and to feel safe enough to do it and I didn't realize how many positions I had put myself in or just been in positions in general where I did not feel comfortable saying no because I was not aligned with what my pleasure was yeah. and how that's like really like affected me in other places I like to, to the point where it was just like there are times where if I'm alone and I'm starving, I'll wait hours to eat. If I'm with my kid, if I'm with my friend and she's like, let's go eat. I'm like, OK, but by myself, I won't act on my own needs. And it was like I didn't realize how much it, it, it's, it's it had become a practice to not act on my own needs and how much I need to explore what my pleasure is in order to explore what my nose are. Or to know, like, just, like, how far that range. Pleasure is not just sex, you know? It's mm. like, is it time to eat, bitch? Mm. Is it, like, you know, does do I fuck with that person? Or am I just, like, fucking with them because, like, they're nice or whatever, you know what I mean? But in those environments, it was the first time I felt empowered enough to be, um, like, have agency over my body in ways because mm. I just, like... It, it's the first time I had to really think about it. Yeah. I also think as a man, I mean, obviously, I think this is a thing for, oh, thank you. I think that as women, like, we can have this conversation all day long about, like, how we've been taken advantage of and that, like, we haven't found our pleasure and all these things. But I think as a man, I'm thinking about you and how even as women, we just, like, a man, you jack off your nut, you experience pleasure, like, you always experience pleasure. Every yeah. time you come, like you resentful. experience pleasure. I'll say what, though. But I, but I will say yeah. that's not true all the time. Well, I think whatever you you do, but, like, there's so much more to pleasure than just the nut. Yeah. And men often don't get to ex or feel like they can't explore that and experience that, and therefore their pleasure is super limited. And especially in a society now where women, we are like, please me. First. Like it's very much like I come first. I mean, there's Hopefully. still there's still a lot of work to do, yeah. but there's a lot more. There's a lot. We're being a lot more vocal about that than ever before. As it should be. Where <laughs> like, absolutely, we but all I, should be right. We all should be. But I think about a man and, and their pleasure, and just like you know the limitations in pleasure for a man um, based on so many things like sexuality and what's and, a lot what behind body it. parts are there's, okay. There's 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 for some folks there's trauma. For some folks there is. Um, there is shame for some men. Uh, for some men, there's that ego that, that gets in the way. I mean, you, you may somewhat envy a dude being able to jerk off and come quick. I, I envy some of the orgasms I see you guys have. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, that shit. Like, I'll stop jerking off. I'll, I'll, I won't jerk off anymore to get four of those nuts a month. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, fuck that. It's amazing. Um, which is why it's like it, it all comes back to the space in my opinion, should be fem feminine driven because there's, I even feel in my, in my experience, there's only my experience, uh, the woman who've come into community, 
hit the ground running a lot more than the dudes do. That's when you see, that's when their asses show us guys, all the like, yo, if I'm in that situation, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna fucking. <laughs> now, I, mean, I see niggas walk in there and freeze up. Like, oh my God, you know? And and women are just like, I don't know what it is. I, I don't, it's just Embracing like, their true essence. Oh my God, it is, it is amazing, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, like, um, which led to to my fiance Simona starting uh, her own girl party with Maj the Fun Sexual. Um, it's called Femsation. So it's Susia Play and Maj the Fun Sexual and Simona. Uh, and this is an all women's party mm. that happens once a month. You could also find out through Susia and YC uh, via the vetting form as well. Um, there's no dick in the building. I got to leave. <laughs> I, I leave like at nine o'clock. I fucking and it's dope for me because I was like, "Yo, wait a minute!" I get to go hang out by myself, maybe catch a movie, eat dinner. <laughs> That's like three and a half, four hours right there. Then four more hours of like, okay, I'm gonna just chill, mm-hmm. you know, go hang out with my homie or some shit, you know. Um, so it's dope because when when I came home after the first, so I remember walking in, and I've never as, as a man. And and there's male privilege, obvious, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I didn't ever feel the absence of it. Feeling the absence of privilege lets you know how much you have. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I walked into my, my home, <laughs> which is our, 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 our event space as well, I've never felt such an energy of like, you're really not needed here. <laughs> you are We're not with so good and i remember i walked in i was like oh and it wasn't it wasn't intimidating it was just what it was it's like oh shit like this is it's some powerful shit i don't know what the fuck went on in here i don't know what happened but it but it feels deep Mm. you know and and she's doing that once a month now how is your i guess um, pleasure expanded in, in this space from like when it started to to now like your interests in pleasure and like the things that maybe you were willing to you were maybe not willing to explore then versus now um i think the biggest thing i'm i'm you know identify kind of straightforward down the middle you know cis head identifying I, I i leave space i don't know where, where i'll be at in a few years um i'm not like rushing I spent so much of my life rushing places and trying to get shit done. And like, like this is like, I'm going to take my time with it. No doors are closed. Um, there's trauma I need to deal with, obviously, you know. Um, I think for me that the toughest part, if I'm answering the question correctly, the toughest part was when Simone and I first got into it. When it was first uh, like, okay, our first threesome was with a dude. Because I was like, I've, I've had threesomes before with 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 women and it wasn't very in, there wasn't much intent behind it. It was more like ah, I'm gonna get these drunk, I'm gonna get drunk. Yo, you want some coke? Yeah, I got some coke. <laughs> Yo, I, I got I got a free crib. I got that. Come on. And then it's just sloppy, gross it's, shit. <laughs> and then I'm like feeling like I accomplished something. It was, uh, <laughs> oh, it was gross. It was gross. But um, with Simona, it, it was like oh shit, like, and then I realized I'm into compersion that point i was like okay cool that was your first time on realizing that yeah yeah i was Wait, like oh my com- gosh what's compersion i enjoy seeing my partner being pleasured, pleased, pleasured. pleasured. Okay. So, prior to that were you like hesitant about doing it in that dynamic were you like were, were there jealousy or she fear? made me feel comfortable with it uh-huh. she made me feel so comfortable because one of the first things that really made me fall in love with her was when she said i i want to be more open-minded and that let me know like oh shit okay <laughs> like we, we gonna get more let's let's see what's up and um it was a mixture of it being incredibly sexy and me wanting to kill everybody in the room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a mixture of me being like, whoa, look at her. Look at her. She's awesome. It's a mixture of like, yeah, she never made that noise with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But all that combined, the more I thought about it and when she would explain to me and you know, just talking to people and talking, I try to talk to as many women as possible about it. Because I trust y'all's opinion a lot more. I just do. But it wasn't, I'm at a place now where I don't feel competitive. You know, if, if you're going to have an interaction with with my fiance, make it good. Right. <laughs> make make it, it good. Like, yo, I'm on a watch. I'm like, okay, I'm, oh. And I'll ask, like, yo, what'd you do? 
Like, what, 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 what was that thing you did? Because <laughs> I want to add it to my arsenal. Like, right. why not? You know? Um, you know, being with other women is dope. You know, I'm a lot more into it now because I'm allowing myself to be pleasured first. I'm like, okay, I'm putting my pleasure as a priority. Um, I spent a lot of time on my fiance's pleasure, and it wasn't, like, from a good place. It was just because I didn't know how to check in with myself, Mm -hmm. you know, so it wasn't like I was being this really cool. Nah, I just didn't know. But now that I do know, now that I know where we're at, you know, it's been it's been a dope ass journey, man. Like, you know, how do you deal with like how in that first encounter with that that first threesome you had with your fiance? I mean, yeah, your fiance wanting like feeling really like turned on and excited and also like you meant to kill everybody in the room. Yeah. How do you like um, m- how do you manage to like stay on the side of not killing everybody in the room? I think it was a it was a relief knowing that the caveman in me was dying. Mm. That was mm. like, oh, this nigga is, he's fighting. That's like, profound. No, no, really, that's really. Profound. Like like when you see a, a cornered animal, mm. like that's what it was. And it's like, yo, and he's still there. He mm. still surfaces. I think it's important mm. for him to be there a little bit. No, yeah, There's sometimes. There's a level of that that I think is yeah. really is but necessary. But it shouldn't be forward no yeah because i think there's a lot of women that uh at least from like the the conversations that i have that you know and and mila and i have discussed this too they want to experience that with their partner but a lot of times their partners are a uninterested or b too possess like they're like experience uh, what the like a male male female female, female female oh yeah yeah um or not even it doesn't even maybe not even a male male female just a male female and my male is watching you know, you know why and I think a lot of women are a lot of women say they're not into MMF. It's because they don't want to be judged by their partners. It's shame. no, I'm saying they yeah. are into it. Oh, they are. They into are it. into but it, but they okay. don't admit they, to they it. They don't yeah. admit to it, yeah. or they don't even know how to address it with their partner. Yeah. And their partner also doesn't know how to take this because yeah. it, they feel emasculated by this idea or yeah. the idea because men are such visual creatures of like me them coming after a man. Like in that in that experience, like what that the the, the visual after. part the visual part is other day going in my pussy. Yeah, and that's like, it, it's it's like I I think men we we are complex individuals, but we're also really simple, and that's like, that's what I mean. Like it's that's literally the just that. And then I'm, I'm gonna go in there after that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know? oh, like, I mean, that's gay. Although, yeah. like, oh, stop, bro. I mean, there 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 is this one one thing that I'm I whenever couples come in and. And, you know, we'll have a conversation. I'll try to talk to them. We'll try to talk to them, you know, just to make sure everything's cool. It's, it's if a couple is coming in and we notice that the couple is only playing with women, it's, and we hear things like, well, she only wants to play with women. It's, you know, respectfully, that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? All that does is build resentment because I've seen couples who've been in lifestyle for a year come to our parties coming in and, the conversation is, how do I tell him that I want to, you know, there's some good looking guy. I want dick too. Mm-hmm. All I've been doing is eating pussy and fucking pleasing watching, him. Watching you fuck yeah. bitches, right? Yeah. So after a while, it's like, like as guys, you know, when we do the whole we're friends things for as long as we can, <laughs> we will do that shit for as long as we can. And I've seen it. And it's like, it's, it's fucked up because it builds resentment and it, 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 it hinders your mutual experience and your individual experience in the lifestyle. You know, the, the resentment's a bitch. Mm-hmm. That, that, shit, that shit will fuck up a moment. Because it's a secret. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it fucks a moment up. Next thing you know, like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So, like, guys with coming as, in with couples, like, your girl wants dick too. So. As a man, though, I'm curious, what would, like, what did, I, obviously, your fiance made you feel comfortable. Was there something specific? Is there something specific? Is what there, did she is say? There a secret Can you, code? What did she tell you that <laughs> made you feel comfortable? Um, <laughs> no, I think A step A. A, I love you so much. I love your dick the most. No. B. <laughs> well, that but, but, yours is bigger. <laughs> but no, you're but, the best. But check it out. But that that will be challenged. It in could, a space, it no. Will, on you a never space, know when that nigga pulls his pants down. There, you're like, there's some monsters in the community. <laughs> it's like, yo, like, like motherfuckers. I'm like, yo, <laughs> what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Why would you bring your big ass dick up you in here? You don't say you want to put that shit away for a second. 
give it a peanut or some shit. <laughs> you know. But, um, I'm just curious as a man who has who had, who had it's, to. It's not the woman's work to do that. It's the man's work to make sure that he's fucking comfortable or don't go into that space. Don't try to get out of the pussy. Like how selfish is that? Like you you you're, you're gonna you're gonna essentially like I don't want to say coerce, but yeah, <laughs> you know you know. Or even be cool about it. like no, nah, I don't know. You want to go to party? I'm gonna go to party. You know, yeah, you know, we can play another one. Like no, like do the work, do the work on yourself first before you go into the space. You know, like am I ready for this? That's the thing. It requires work that everyone's not ready to do before, during, and, and after. after. Communicate yeah. if you're going to this couple. Like, be open to the fact that your woman also has sexual needs, and there is. You can make love to your woman, and no one will ever do that to her the way you do it. But there may be someone who could blow her back out in a really good way, in a really therapeutic way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, yo, man, thank you. I've thanked homies. Like, yo, man, that was dope. Mm-hmm. Like, I appreciate you. Look, she fell asleep. Wow, she took the took the edge <laughs> off. She's so much nicer this yo, morning. Oh, my God. No, man, that, and that's the thing about it. And, and, <laughs> and she's watched me get pleased like that, too. Mm-hmm. And we please people like that. So it's like, as a dude, do the work. Do the work. Like, don't come into a space just hoping to get pussy because it's gonna, it's not gonna be fulfilling. You could do that anywhere else. Right. Go, not you no, know, not our party. Go to other parties. Right. If you want to come into Susia and Wasi, come to Susia play. Do the work. You know there there, there there's a book I recommend, um, and I don't. It's called Ethical Non Monogamy, and I appreciate that book. Um, and from there, you can read about other things. Um, you know, there's, 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 as, as, and I can only speak from men's perspective. Men, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of letting go. We're holding on to a lot of fucking antiquated thoughts. Uh, I just saw a post earlier today that says, um, if your girl gives you a threesome, it's because you got, if you got, it's because you got whack dick. Uh, girls don't like sharing good dick. And it's like, what does that even, <laughs> what does that even mean? I, I know women. So who have good who so they're talking have, they're talking men out of threesome yes i don't i don't i, don't, <laughs> I, I, I just read it and i'm like yo <laughs> you are so far removed from this mm. like people want to give their opinions on things they don't know anything about i know i saw something on spiritual world of whatever the fuck and it was this girl and she was like i like getting rammed i like whatever if you want to like a train on me whatever you call it i like it and then i, I went to look at the comments oh, girl, girl. and i just see Everybody like she's she's never getting married. Who's like all these things? I even had a, I had an ex boyfriend. He's the one you ran into this weekend, mm. and he told me that this girl he used to date told her told him that he wanted a male male. She wanted a male like two guys, and I asked him like, well, how does that? What did that make you feel like? And he was like, I would never marry someone who told me that. I'm like, so you could be completely in love, completely ready to marry someone, and then the moment she expressed this fantasy, you would cut her off. He was also young and fucking stupid, so yeah. that was why he got cut off. But it's just so crazy, like, the programming that happens not only to men, but to women, you know, because for forever, I was like, I would, I'll never do that. You guys have been hitting like, us, I will never asking do that us so many questions about the Good Vibe Retreat. Because so I've been put in rapey minute, ass situations with rapey ass so guys. All the details and I had to really like to know. I'm the question that a lot of people ask us is, what is the Good Vibe like, Retreat? It's okay and why did to, like, have a fantasy. So the Good Vibe Retreat and it's okay is to express a retreat that, for and women person that you're to come, it to relax, doesn't fuck let with it, go, it's okay release, to them kind of step away from their normal schedule routine, get to know women from all over the world, and really tap with men and women into yourself. What men are opportunity to express to and what women are reinvent like, yourself to express, essentially and how you, you don't really know a lot of these women so there's really no one like there to judge you or so you can kind of create not worthy this new of, version of marriage of yourself, or worthy of partnership because what it feels like sexual to be yourself because men will make you feel like that like yeah, i'm supposed to get all the pussy you're not but feeling you pressured get all like, when you're really no, in the most feminine divine space to really do the work if it's in a safe space it's consensual for sure i mean i think as women we do so much shit i know i saw a train Get run on somebody's daily basis. The party. Yeah, I was work. highly jealous. We're momming. I was like, what the fuck? We're wifing. They were all. Uh, a lot of times and we get lost. It was for hours. Was, I, was, I didn't even so realize so hours had gone by. It was and hours. And I was like, wow. Who we are and who we want to be. Has, one guy can't do like, that. I'm like, uh, she has. Like, she's like, she's women are built. I'm like, the stamina that I'm seeing here is amazing. And we're all. With nature and with women. And with yourself, most importantly. And there's respect. Treat yourself. Pamper yourself. Be pampered. all kinds of good vibes going on. And, um. 
Honestly, think, just I take time for yourself without the input of anybody have a lot else. More sex than men. We also really Obviously. created this retreat you know what I'm so like, because like we wanted to make am I something really where you get really didn't have to think about anything. We've literally done all the work for you. All you really have to way, do is just show up. Pleasure? Buy a plane like, ticket and that? show up. Everything else is like, taken care of. I don't want to be the source really of everything. Taking care of transportation. But, but it comes, You'll be it comes down to gourmet like, like meals said, like every day. Checking your insecurity. Um, all of the activities. The like, we can't even have add-on activities. Even though we'd like to. Because like in love and relationships. We have chart reading. You know, massage. partner. It's like excursions. We've learned Beach that trips, uh, like um, ownership is acceptable. You don't have to that, smoke like, weed, but we got that too. To if you need it, and someone can come um, in and be something you else, don't to you have to come with a friend. Take you away from experience me. that yeah, there's encourage you to come even alone. Someone, you can bring you a friend, but most of the women come alone. Overbearing. And also, a lot of people are asking, like, do you anyway. have to be a mom? Like I know we're good moms' bad choices, but no, it's a lot. This is about being a woman first. This is about leaving those kids back home and doing you. So even if you don't have kids, and then also I'd like to mention about about single you are. We've had women too. from as young as you know? twenty, and uh, so we, as old as we, um, we also we the don't have to be black and, and <laughs> or brown. There's no race there. that is not invited um, to the Good Viber Tree. Everyone is accepted, it, you know? um, as long as you're there and to we've been lucky be open in to the process and try something. The community new, itself has you're invited to the Good Viber Tree, the safe space where we get a lot of really. A lot of people ask us where is the retreat. So this retreat in particular is happening in February. So we have two different dates. The first is. Is February second really through the seventh, and the, the corner, second date is uh, February eleventh through the sixteenth. It's just going to be this beautiful, be like, magical um, experience was, that you know. You really couldn't recreate in this place watching. by yourself. And We've really tapped into the community and it, it really of healers like, like, and, and, and people, people out there that so we trust and, and that we've also and experienced there and wanted to bring and to I thought you she was to experience. Like a little nervous. It happens I, I in, talk to her. on the crib inside of Costa Rica <laughs> and, um, in a town called Puerto Viejo. It's a really small town watery. with watery such a beautiful and rich community. Food is good. People are kind. Music is good. The weather is warm. Um, it's really a magical place. And then she magical starts place. crying, and I'm holding the her. Is a magical place. And then I'm it's learning something about myself because I, it feels like a, I like wasn't aroused by her crying. Hug, I was aroused honestly. by the it fact that she felt like safe. It feels like a vulnerable yeah. exhale. Yeah, and that was um, like, whoa. That, I mean, we, we didn't do anything, but you know, I, I let her. Well, we will be you there. Know, yours cry. truly. We came and spoke we, to her. Um, some other people, and, and she was just a connect workshop. And seeing things like that, you don't see that in other spaces. You're not going to kind of get know, to the nitty gritty and, and help you. Um, the bottom line is really let down what just it. boundaries and walls that we create. That's always, and always going to be that. It's always going to be a space. Free. You know, yeah, if you open up to women a sex that maybe you may have never, would have never said hello to in any other, then you're fucking experience, up in any other time, time or way. So it's really about you making new friends, space, and everyone is there with the same intention, talk which is to, everybody, to, to put connect back to themselves and possibly make a new friend. And if you're not willing to, if you're there for that reason, and you're going to make the hard decisions and tell certain people they can't come back. Men or women, that you came. You know, I encourage you to go check out our reviews on We Travel. You can get real life reviews there from our former We're guests and former attendees you know, like, to see the their experiences and hear about their first. experiences. It is and truly, not everybody truly a, a magical, and, and magical sex is such experience. A, like, if you're looking like to learn how to manifest, if you're looking to tap like into you yourself, tell stories if you're looking like to just relax, really the, if you're looking for a new tribe of women and friends and support, just being, having a human experience with other humans that are open the good vibe just being open and vulnerable. We get a lot of questions too about the rooming situation and first of all, the property that we take over, we take over the entire your property like so it's just us here and, being, and like um, and i'm so grateful so it's very like very private you can do anything you want whether you want a skinny dip you want to do so cartwheels in the morning whatever the it is that you want to do you want to light a joint walk through the property and pleasure and roll sex, up to like, yoga with your joint like the that's totally to cool show up just um more vulnerable the rooms are double occupant with our friends so we have we have a bunch of different options so you can either share a room with someone you each have all the bed if you're not having like even our friend our friends or say you want to save in the last Five years. We have like there's a not a friend that I can't share like, um, a take large off my bed. shirt. At, like, we also they can't have come over and take the option. I can't take off my shirt, and I'm like, are you okay? In your own no, bitch. I know you're okay because this is the community so that I've have different options. We it's need a body. Out and it's link on We Travel. You can see what these different options are. But now and it's like our homegirl came over this weekend and me, Orlando, and Rumi as well. Huddled on the couch. You have your own bathroom. You have your own patio. You know what I mean? Like the apartment. And like this boutique hotel is nestled in the glass world. That's not how their friendships cross. And that's beautiful. 
but for me, it's like the part of Puerto Viejo of that not feels like, it's like some sexual shit, but it's it feels like, like you're the kind sensuality of nestled in away from the world, cry. and that's why I love it so much like, because you really here, kind right? of have to you know tap I mean? like, out, just the honesty, you really tap into yeah. yourself. I think that's like when you're in these, when you're in this space, and you're in at this property. We also get a lot of questions about payment. So, do you have to pay all at once? The answer is no, you do not. You can put down a five hundred dollar deposit to hold your spot, and you can make payments up until basically the retreat. Basically, yeah. Um, not only that, it's really yeah, helpful that you can get contributions from friends and family. There's a link where people can contribute to exist. your and freedom. Like that. There is a Christmas place is about where to come I can up. be free. So don't be shy. Ask your friends and family where, like, to contribute I'm, and I like, feel like really uh, give you a gift that matters I'm, and that you really want. I'm, I'm just really excited for this retreat. Every single group that we've had has been even us as so divine. I know when me and Mila first started Each the podcast, person that was there know, was meant to be I, there. When I first and became single, when I, I say women couple, come one way and leave another, them. there was a level of excitement. Just, there's there, nothing there like it. I've seen such transformations parent, like, on this retreat, this as well as us and going in and as retreat leaders. And, 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 and like I didn't have anyone that, to share women that have also experienced the retreat and because I was the facilitators only one of, of the retreat a child so I really I really like want to encourage you to take this time for yourself so because you deserve like, it okay you've been thinking about it you've been thinking about um, when am I going to have I know a break? That, like, when am I going to be able to do something so for myself? Uh, most of our demographic this is it. are women. You have the time mothers, not all to really them, invest in yourself. That want to explore these what an amazing investment. I mean, we've really created and curated this like, incredible oh, itinerary. I really, I really dedicated on that. Like, I can't to nurturing. Do that anymore. Oh, there's no way I can be like yeah. a, 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 an and out of this area. That's It's interesting. And which is why I love yourself so much. You're going to have to think about shit. Because we do have a lot of people. And you're not going to come back And I was going to say that, you know, when I came to. Don't think twice about it. I came last time, a girl recognize way me. worth it and mom, i'm not saying it because like, i created oh God, it i'm saying it because i've heard it like, time and time and time and again like, you just you guys know if you've gone on vacation ever you spend a shit ton of money that you don't come back with any meaningful a, like relationships want to have these experiences and experiences B, have really. already had these so um actively take a leap of faith invest in yourself invest in your relaxation to stay at home like we have an idea of what these people are supposed to look like and how these people are supposed to see they yeah. 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 No, yeah. You know, and and mm-hmm. and and that's this that's the perception yeah. and the misconception, yeah. I feel. There there are some very they're, they're all very powerful. We have very powerful women in our group. Um, you know, all kinds of career backgrounds, teachers, lawyers, you know, hospitality, you know, um police officers. You know, they're just there being human. Mm-hmm. They're just there exploring and I think, I think seeing this, a lot of people may be triggered by the conversation alone. Like, mm-hmm. fuck that, you know. Um, I definitely feel, as as a parent, you know, it's for me, it's important to have this conversation. My son's going to be eighteen in May. Does he know yeah. what you do? He knows I have a sex positive community. It's an ongoing conversation. Um, I talked to him about what sex positivity is to him. You know, is a beautiful young queer man child, <laughs> <laughs> and he understands that there's different kinds of sex. You know, and the main thing is to be true to yourself. Who do you share space with? Who do you allow in your space? Why are you doing it to please somebody or to for yourself? Um, and also understanding that you know there are even people in my family like who are heavily religious, and it's like. I mean, I can't. For a while, it was. I was very, I was kind of ashamed. Like, oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it was so much shame as much as, like, uh, they, they don't need to know. Kind right. of, you know, I, like, I, I, don't, I, don't, like, know. I don't feel like explaining this shit. Yeah, yeah, because they're <laughs> not going to get it. Like, right. if you made, like, it's like talking to someone about politics who's, like, an avid Trump supporter. Yeah, like, like yeah. this is going to be a circular conversation. Like, you don't, you're there. You want to remain there. It's your safe space. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can't judge you. For that, you know, just don't fuck with me. (laughs) Don't fuck with my space, you know. I think people forget that um, 
as humans, we're multifaceted. So it doesn't really matter. Like, even if you're listening right now and you're judging the fuck out of us, that's cool. Change the channel. But you're probably still listening because you're intrigued. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, like, our human nature, humans are intended to be sexual hence how we all got here and populated the earth um so like i think a lot of times we are removing the sexuality and the sensuality from our existence because it's been shamed it's been judged um and then we're harboring all these secret kinks and fantasies and just like only indulging in them alone when the door is closed and then feeling guilt about it and like it festers and i think the like the the most um like dynamic thing about having the freedom to explore your sexuality wherever you're at in your life, whether you be a parent or a doctor or a nurse or whatever the fuck you do is like acknowledging that at the very base, we are all sexual beings and we should, we have, we should all have the right to explore those, those sexual, those, those, I don't know how you say like the, the (laughs) spectrum of sexuality, the spectrum of sexuality, (laughs) Um, without shame or without guilt and there's really no point in your life because you have a degree in this or because you have kids or because you're newly divorced or whatever the fuck you, lie you've told yourself that you don't have the like the wherewithal to explore it and it's, you don't have to be single you don't have to be married mm-hmm. you don't have to be this or that to be like hey today's the day I'm gonna go pop open my pussy in the mirror and see what's popping you know and i think sometimes like you said like couples don't even discuss sex together the the only person you're having sex with a lot of times you don't even think about it for yourself you just turn off the lights get naked and hump but like the exploration of and the freedom of exploring your sexuality in different facets really gives you freedom to explore all parts of yourself and it's like if you're able to explore that part then you can like oh well maybe there is some trauma here maybe there's some things i need to work on there and you'd be surprised when exploring your pleasure sexually or other the other things that come up that you realize you have to do work on it's Mm -hmm. just really like a means to really exploring yourself and growth because like you said like even in a relationship even as a single person you go into a space like that and things are going to come up and you're like damn i'm jealous damn i'm insecure damn that really makes me feel uncomfortable why yeah you know like do i think this person's going to leave me do i think like that pussy is better than mine like Mm -hmm. what what is it Like the things that come up in exploring your own pleasure are things that usually people cloak for so long until and and they just dismiss and they numb out because they think they're not supposed to explore or that it's bad to explore. And in, in reality, just like giving yourself permission to experience different lifestyles and different like things is key. You know, I was just talking to Orlando. I was like, wow, we have like such a cool life. Mm-hmm. You know, like we could literally sex party on Friday and take the kid to school on Monday, you know, That's like great. pumpkin patch on Tuesday. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't make me a less parent or a less. I think it makes you a more well-rounded parent. It does. I'm like a much happier bitch because yeah. I'm having, a, I'm living a full life. I'm exploring all of the things. Like yeah. I didn't cut off my curiosity when I turned fucking 20 because now it's all work and bills. You yeah. know, it's like the playground of adulthood in ways. Yeah. It's like. Being able to constantly keep that curiosity and not have limits to how you explore because you're in a relationship or because you're X, Y age. It's just like this constant like playfulness of life yeah. and how we are able to explore it. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful for your your space yeah. because yeah. it's really provided that for us. And like when we left there, we're like, yeah. oh, my God. I, was, I, was I also like, want I to touch on something it. real quick in terms of and I'm sorry, okay. I just because um. You mentioned safety earlier. You mentioned, um, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, being around different things, different sexualities. Our our play party is, with intent, going to become more queer. You know, because in holding, in opening a space, a whole space for black and brown and indigenous humans, we can't just do it for one kind of human, right? So in a safe space like that... um, Another situation that was really dope, I saw this brother recently had top surgery take his shirt off Mm. in the space. And seeing him go from like, you know, is anybody looking at me, you know, have the scars and, you know, and imagining his journey, you know, the shit he went through. If we think we're fucking struggling, like, oh, my God, you're like, this is like, holy shit, this is amazing. This powerful human is here right now and is 
making the steps towards being comfortable in his own skin. Mm -hmm. You know, so we definitely let people know if 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 that bothers you, don't come to our party either. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, you know, we we're really trying to hold space for all kinds of people and and not in a pandering way. Some places are very pandering. And it's like, nah, this is this is what it is, mm-hmm. you know. Um, one person I want to shout out, Glitosaurus Rex. Um, she's super dope. She put me onto that. She she had a, a really dope uh, transhuman party in our space, and I saw. I was like, wow, like the just the bravery it takes for some of these humans to come out and be in a space, and then seeing their postures change, mm. you know, and back straighten up, and when they feel safe. You know, and it's like an everyday thing. So, like, we want to hold space for them, too. Everybody should have a place to feel safe. Yeah, man, for sure. You know, sexuality is a dope thing. And it's not always fucking. It's not always penetration, (laughs) you know? Well, I think when you you have a space like that and, you know, you open up the space for for all, it allows people to navigate in their everyday life with a lot more compassion because Mm. sexuality ultimately it bridges the gap between between people and there's a lot of misconceptions in 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 all communities about what that looks like what that might feel like for someone and and then you actually experience it and you're like huh. yeah decolonizing yeah de- decolonizing oh. sexuality right. facilitates compassion for other people mm-hmm. and when you have compassion for other people you're able to be on common ground. I feel decolonization of sexuality is hand in hand with fighting patriarchy and white supremacy. It's right there. Because the way we look at ourselves is through their lens that they put on us. Right. So it's it's a constant struggle. It's <laughs> constant work. If you're down for the work, come through. If you're not, go to another party. <laughs> you know? Um, one more person I want to shout out. Go ahead. New York City. NYC Love House, NYC Love House. These are all amazing, strong, strong black and brown sisters who have really, in many ways, guided us just by being there, just by their presence alone. You guys too, you know, um, just by being there. And, and, and when we see the, the right people there, it's like, okay, we're doing the right thing, you know, and we're looking forward to our, our pop-up parties. Yes. Soon come. Uh, yeah. Does that mean different cities? Yeah. Yes, we yeah. Like we that. To we like come that. to LA. Like that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we we didn't get to do an affirmation. This week's affirmation segment is brought to you by Target's Black Beyond Measure Initiative. Illuminating Intersectionality is a three-part video series hosted by our girls Fran of the Friend Zone, Dr. Takia, and Jade from Getting Grown Podcast. That's right. This series features dynamic discussions talking about identity, power, and honoring all the complexities of black womanhood. So I want to bring it right. back. Sure, sure. Bring it back and uh, ask you if you have an affirmation that you'd like to share with our audience. Um, my affirmation um, is to continuously work from a place of compassion and love. I want to work from that space. I want to live in that space. Because it, it it makes me happy, you know, like being able to listen to people, being able to help people, um, being able to connect people. So, yeah, like my mantra is like reside in compassion and love. Reside, reside in, in compassion, compassion and, and love. love. I love that. I dig that. Me too. So make sure you check out Illuminating Intersectionality wherever you watch YouTube and check out youtube.com slash loudspeakers network and check out our girls Jade, Fran, and Dr. Takia for some really incredible combos. Um, You also pulled a tarot card at the top of the show. The sun card. And uh, Luis told us that his mom is a tarot queen. So (laughs) if I'm saying anything wrong, you can just chime right in if you know what this card means. Um, I thought this was interesting. The sun tarot card radiates with optimism and positivity. Um, in the foreground, a young naked child is sitting on top of a calm white horse. The child represents the joy of being connected with your inner spirit. And his nakedness is a sign he has nothing to hide and has all the innocence and purity of childhood. The white horse is also a sign of purity and strength. 
Um, it represents success, radiance, and abundance. It gives you strength and tells you that no matter where you go or what you do, your positive and radiant energy will follow you and bring you happiness and joy. People are drawn to you because you can always see the bright side and bring such warmth into other people's lives. This is what you do. Insusia. Uh, this beautiful warm energy is what will get you through the tough times and help you succeed. You're also in a position where you can share your highest qualities and achievements with others. Radiate who you are and what you stand for. Shine your love on those you care about. Um, the sun connects you to your power base, not fear-driven, egotistical power, but the abundant inner energy radiating through you right now. You'll sense it in your solar plexus chakra, calling you to s express yourself authentically and be fully present in the world around you. You have what others want and are being asked to radiate your energy and your gifts out into the world in a big way. Tap into your power and use your divine, and use your divine will to express that power in positive ways. Susia pop ups. <laughs> Honestly, Susia pop ups. Susia NYC. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I kind of feel cool. All right. That was accurate. Spot on. <laughs> and I feel that every time I'm every time I'm in your presence, every time I see you, I feel this immense radiance. Mm -hmm. Even your text messages. I was like, he's so fucking nice. So sweet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So kind. kind. Look at these texts I'm getting. I know. <laughs> You're making me snorkel. <laughs> like, your hugs. I'm like, oh, you said this feels good. <laughs> um, okay, before we let you go, we have a show. I mean, we have a segment on our show called Horror Stories. It's okay. time for Horror Stories. Okay. I got, I got one. And what what a, what other guests would we ask but you to share one? I was going to say, I was like, should we like ask our fans? No. I feel like you have some... Yeah. Good ones up there. I think I think one of the <laughs> one of the the more interesting ones, which was a big challenge, um, to 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 who I thought I was as a man at that point, um, is very interesting. It's also a story about just being honest with the people that you're interacting with, right? Yeah. Um, we're having a threesome, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> I got I got it. This is a funny fucking story. <laughs> I love you. So we're having a threesome, right? And um my partner, you know, she likes being choked out a little bit, right? So we meet this dude, uh which had me thinking too, he's a big dude, right? From Ghana. I'm like, damn shorty, this is what you're into? Like <laughs> big, like you know, I'm like finding all these things out. Football player, easily like 30 pounds heavier than me, just pure muscle. I'm like, word? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll roll with it, you know. <laughs> so we're there and everything, and, and it was just, you know, it was a cool vibe. He was a cool dude, you know. It wasn't, you know, I didn't feel threatened or anything like that. It was just you three? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this was, I was in my stage of just making sure that she was good mm -hmm. before I started focusing on myself. So anyway, she's, she's riding me, right? And he has her choked up a little bit, and she starts... You know, orgasming and kind of slightly passes out a little bit and shit <laughs> because of the chokehold. And he's behind her, right? But then we're in the sheets are spreading a little bit. And I'm kind of like, I see his head. He has her like this and his head sinking. And I'm like, what's going on? And then I, I feel this on my leg. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I really want to like let you know, like, it, uh, I'm so glad that that Mandy brought you guys into the space. Same. Uh, the energy changed when you walked in, and I was like, "Whoa, these are some powerful motherfuckers in the space," and I I appreciate you allowing us this opportunity. Uh, absolutely, we can't Thank wait so to much. come back, and I hope that should we like collaborate on a Susia LA party. <laughs> let's let's I want to and I want to make sure that we have the the structure and support system necessary for people to feel to, safe to feel safe mm -hmm. all kinds of humans mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You're, you're walking in a different a different area a different place the vetting process has begun Susia <coughs> NYC on IG yeah get so, vetted get vetted tell There's, the people where they can find you it's only at Susia NYC that's, that's the it? only place right now we're going to expand a bit more we've uh, with intent we kept small because uh, growth can be painful <laughs> and uh, growth could also be dangerous. So we want to make sure it's as safe as possible. So get vetted. Uh, we have uh, the all-women's party run by um, Susia Play, 
and Maj the Fun Sexual. Uh, that's going to happen once a month. No dicks in the building, ladies. It's dope. There's all kinds of beautiful things. We have our regular play party every two weeks. And our dance party will be probably once a month or twice a week until the spring when our backyard opens up. Nice. I got to come. I feel like I, know, I, I always come in the winter. I know. I'm like, I want to come. Oh, this. The backyard is bomb. Yeah, I, the the backyard patio. Bomb. I haven't even, yeah, I haven't even been back there. The backyard is bomb. Like that shit is fucking a vibe. Well, thank you again. Thank you. And we will be there. And you guys know where to find us. If you saw our retreat commercial in the middle of this episode, make sure you click the link in this episode description. Come to the Good Vibe Retreat in Costa Rica. It's in a few weeks. You have a few more weeks to make payments and to come join us. It's a life-changing, incredible fucking experience. So if you've been called to come, this is your sign to get your ticket, put down your deposit, and join us for a magical, mystical, sexy jungle trip. Oh, that sounds so <laughs> exciting. I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Thank always. You. We always uh, do. Yeah, we always it. do. It's a really special. So. It's a special. It's a special place. It's not. It's not a play party, but mm. it has that vibe of just freedom. vulnerability and freedom there. Freedom for, could for happen the women, anywhere. Right. For the women. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, make sure you go rate and review this ep- Not this episode. Just us on Apple Podcasts, you guys. Please just take a second out of your time right now. If you're an Apple user, go check us out. Give us that five star rating. It really matters, especially for Black and Brown. Podcast makers, mm. creators, creators. We need those. We need those stars and things of that nature. Um, and you can follow us on Instagram at Good Moms underscore Bad Choices. Join Patreon where we release bonus content and a lot of other cool stuff over there. And is that it? Oh, you guys, check out my hat. <laughs> it's our new merch. It's cute. It's right? very cute. It's, it's a cute. bucket hat for the winter. It's a bucket hat for the winter. It's fuzzy. It's warm. It's cute. It's stylish. Yeah. If it's all big heads, I got a big ass head with a lot of hair, but you can also tighten it on the inside if you have a tiny little head. Oh, I didn't tighten it. Oh, yeah. Let me try that again. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.